Hello everybody, Dr Octobeard here with my top tips for making great games that will help you navigate the good, the bad, okay. and the truly strange decisions of games design. If you know exactly where all five pieces are, you'll probably be able to find it. In this second video, we take a look at difficulty, punishment, player progress, and the difference between all three. For most people starting out in games design, they often start with basic orientation and movement tools, creating primitive 3D objects like cubes and spheres, and then moving on very quickly to how to apply textures. The problem with this approach is that you tend to end up with some really cool environments, but not much game difficulty. Let's take this example, a work in progress from student A. The street scene looks pretty impressive, if unfinished, but there isn't very much to do. This gun can shoot me. If I let it shoot me for long enough, it will kill me, but I can pretty easily run past it and get out of its range. This is an example of difficulty, how hard the game is to play. Difficulty usually relates to the game's obstacles. In this case, how many enemies are there? How much damage do they do? And how difficult are they to avoid? Changing any of these things could make the game harder to beat. Let's consider the same game, but with one crucial difference. Now the gun kills me on sight. Difficulty is not the same thing as punishment, as this sequence from Mega Man shows. Whilst the number of enemies, the angle and frequency of their shots, and the amount of health they take off this bar all make the game difficult, what punishes the player is what happens when they lose their health. Health in Mega Man does not go back up between levels, meaning once it's lost, the player needs to kill enemies in order to get it back up again, and the health drops are painfully infrequent. Even more punishing is the fact that death sends you right back to the start of the level. There are no saves, there are no checkpoints. This is what makes Mega Man one of the most punishing games ever. Fortunately, we don't make games like that anymore. Oh. But getting back to the game by student A, player punishment is what happens when the player fails. That could be failing to make a jump from platform to platform, failing to dodge enemy fire, or failing to sneak around without being caught on camera. We can see punishment in action in a couple of different games. The first is Moving Out, released in 2020. In the game, the player has to move furniture into a moving van before the time runs out. You can play alone or with a friend. On most levels, the punishment for dropping an item is just that it hits the floor and you have to waste a bit of time picking it up. But in some cases, the punishment is much more severe. The object, or even the player, is sent right back to where it came from and you have to start out going for that object all over again. Player punishment in 2018 Subnautica works in a fairly similar way. Subnautica is a survival game where the player has to craft resources in order to survive an alien water world. You begin in a life pod with limited food and water. Everything you need is under the waves, and you have to dive down in order to get it. If you run out of air whilst down there, you die and wake up again on the life pod. At first glance, this seems like a fairly weak punishment. But dying outside the life pod also means that you lose everything but one of the things you've gathered that trip out. And you have to go back and scavenge them all over again. Passing 100 meters, oxygen efficiency decreased. Returning to the life pod means you can bank resources, but it also limits how far you can explore. Needless to say, the really good stuff is really far away from the life pod. Subnautica is also a fine example of player progression, how the player advances and improves as they play the game. You start off with nothing but food, water, medkits, and a sprinkling of other items. But by gathering and combining resources, you can build more and more things that you will need to survive, explore, and eventually try to escape the planet. Welcome. 
Another example of progression can be found in 2019's Void Bastards. In this game, the player is entirely expendable and will get killed again and again exploring and scavenging on board spaceships. When one player dies, the ship simply thaws out another one from the deep freeze. Recruiting replacement client. But the player gets to keep the equipment and upgrades scavenged from before. So each playthrough the game gets easier, allowing you to get further. Of course, because the game is balanced, the further you go, the harder the enemies become and the cooler the loot you can find on their ships. Being allowed to keep your stuff between characters means that the player always feels as though they are making progress. Issuing WCD client care package. Which is what player progression is really all about. By having an idea of how you will make the game difficult, how much you intend to punish the player, and how the player will get better equipment and access to locations as they progress through the game, you can ensure that you have a beautiful environment to run around in that is also a really exciting and engaging game to play. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, let's see about those void bastards, shall we? Yeah.